Hi everyone, welcome to this video where I am setting up the rest of my weeklies for the month of August in my bullet journal to the theme of India. Okay, so we're getting started and on my very first page, I wanted to showcase the amazing amount of animals found in India. It has at least 90,000 types of animals and some are so incredibly rare that I just thought it would be super exciting to see. Like there's this one that I've decided to draw which is so prehistoric looking and it's called the one-horned rhinoceros or also known as the Indian rhino. Now the largest population of these are found in a place called Kazuranga National Park and Tiger Reserve which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's nestled in the foothills of the Eastern Himalayas. So it's very jungle-like and I just wanted to try and emphasize that jungle state that you will find a lot in India and have the little rhino peeking out through the forest. So this rhino, the greater one-horned rhino, is actually the largest of all the rhino species and the population of these rhinos actually plummeted due to hunting sport and were killed as agricultural pests and at the start of the 20th century there were actually only 200 left which meant sadly these guys were very close to extinction but with one of the greatest conservation success stories in Asia thanks to strict protection from Indian and Nepalese wildlife authorities today's population have increased to around 3,700 rhinos which just gave me warm fuzzies to see that we can make such a difference if we really try and then that kind of idea brought me to the next thing that I wanted to do on this page and that was include another Gandhi quote that really just speaks to me and just works perfectly with this idea and as you can see that quote is be the change you wish to see in the world and in terms of the national park where this is um, just the national parks here sound amazing in India. I really want to go and see them when I get to India one day. Um, another national park that I would absolutely love to visit is called the Kana National Park. And this one is actually the setting for Rudyard Kipling's classic novel, The Jungle Book. Um, it looks so lush and it's full of endangered species and is like an untouched jungle paradise. So I definitely want to go there and I thought that would be kind of nice to include on this spread. So that real jungle book feeling of all the greenery and lushness surrounding this greater one-horned rhino and the way I'm doing it as you've been watching I used a toned paper so it's like a grayish very natural raw looking paper and it's not marker paper so I've made sure to put a piece of paper underneath so it doesn't soak through onto my desk um, and then I'm using my alcohol markers which are ohuhu ones and I'm just trying to build up layers to get some sort of realism into the animal itself obviously not going for full realism but just just a little bit of shading here and there um, and I just love using alcohol markers they just blend so beautifully and oh, I just really enjoy it so any chance I can try and use them I do I really love the look of these rhinos, how the, the skin on them, it almost looks like armor because it sort of divides across their body. Um, I think that's what makes them just look so prehistoric. They literally make me think of a triceratops or something. Yeah, so just really cool looking creatures. And so this is the best spot to see them at that Kazaringa National Park. So one day, bucket list added. I was a bit torn whether to keep this more shades of gray on this particular spread, but I just couldn't resist adding some jungle color in there and I thought it might make the rhino really pop if I added lots of contrast on the outside and even go to the depths of adding black in behind the rhino um, as if it's really inside that forest-like area. And then she was finished, so I was able to cut her out and stick her into the book. Oh, and for a little bit more pop on that page, I added some little specks of white ink around and just kind of where some highlights might be just to add a little bit of extra interest. And then to tie all that green in across on the other side of the page, I used my Tombow Jewel Brush Pen, which I have in green. I've only really got two of these, green and a pink. So that's why you don't see me use them overly often, but I do really love them. So I wanna get some more in, in due time. And here is a look at the finished Rhino spread. Now for the next page, week three of August. 
There is plenty of temples in India. They are a country full of temples. So you can imagine how beautiful they are and it was difficult to choose one to illustrate. Um, but one that I came across in my research was the Kandaria Mahadev Temple. Hopefully I'm saying that right. It's the largest and most ornate Hindu temple in the medieval temple group that's found at Kajiraho in Madhya Pradesh, which is once again a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So this temple is actually considered to be one of the best examples of temples preserved from the medieval period in India. And its name, Kandarya Mahadev Temple, actually means the great god of the cave. What I found so amazing about these temples, and this one in particular, is the detail that goes into them. On this one, the exterior, which you can't see from my small drawing, but it's covered in all these sculptures and carvings of gods and goddesses, and then a lot of erotic scenes um, as well. But from a distance, it looks like just angular layers that seem like jagged, but also undulating like the Himalayas. I think it was designed to look, have that mountain range kind of effect, but I just thought it was really, really interesting piece of architecture. Um, there was actually another temple that caught my interest as well called the Kani Mata Temple, and it's known as the Temple of Rats. So in this particular temple, approximately 25,000 black rats actually live and are revered in this temple. Now tourists come from everywhere to see this temple full of rats. Um, I think it would be really interesting to see, but I can't help feeling a little bit squirmy at the thought of it, like all the rats, like from Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade, just gives me a little bit of a squirmy feeling. But having said that, I actually have saved a rat once. Bit of a random story, but I'll tell you anyway. Um, this rat got trapped in like a grate outside my parents' house. And then when it got out, it ran into the kitchen and straight behind the fridge. So we managed to catch it in like a shoe box and went to set it free in the sand dunes nearby because honestly, it was a really cute rat. Um, and then let's hope that little fella just survived and didn't run and make trouble at someone else's house because I don't know that it would have been saved the next time at the next house, who knows? So yes, back to the drawing, what I'm doing here. So as you can see, I'm having to use a lot of line work in this particular piece. I'm just using my Pigma Microns. Surprisingly, I was fearing that it wouldn't turn out looking anything like the temples because there is so much detail in them. But because I just kind of skipped any thought of getting like realisticness in there, <laughs> realism, I just kept making lines and dashes to sort of build some sort of jagged edge on them. And it turned out really nice. So I'm happy with how this this piece looked because it just like it reminds me of the real thing but it didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would so that was a very nice surprise. I do love that about drawing architecture in your bullet journals because you want something probably quick unless you're like me and using it as your art practice um, but yeah if you just want something decorative just try a bit of architecture because you can just go really simple with the subject and just use really scratchy lines and eventually you'll build up to have something that reflects what it actually is. Um, and then to jazz this page up, I decided to use some washi tape. This one is a really beautiful gold washi tape and I just sliced down the edges to use pieces of it because the pattern itself on the edge really reminds me of like an Indian pattern. And then I'm just using a lot of my gold pen to illustrate some flowers that are down in the foreground in front of the temples themselves. And then adding a little bit of this red, it looks red on the barrel, but it comes out like a really pinky color. And then just writing the days of the week in at the top. And this page is done, a nice simple spread. By the way, I might mention here that my rings that I'm wearing are actually from an Etsy shop online that are based in India and they are a recent birthday gift and I've just been in love with those stones for ages. This is not a sponsored section. I just thought I would let you know because I have had quite a few comments and interest in these beautiful rings. So I might leave her link down in the description box because yeah, I was really happy with the rings. Alrighty, moving on to the next page, which is week four. And this next page, I decided to do something that if I were traveling in India, I would definitely, definitely want to do. It's something I had never known and never realized it was available there, but it looks amazing. So they are these houseboats that float along or cruise down the Kerala backwaters. So Kerala is in the south part of India and there was a few names of these backwater channels that came up. The one I read most about was the Aleppe backwaters and it just sounded beautiful and ideal to be cruising along this 
quite stagnant river between these jungle vines and trees down either side. It just looked really, really cool in the pictures. So that is definitely on the bucket list. And these waters are actually popularly called um, Venice of the East. But to be honest, I'm getting more of like an Amazon rainforest kind of vibe. Um, but minus the anaconda, of course, um, it looks just so beautiful. And I think it would be such a nice experience to be floating down there in one of these cool boats, which are, you know, very um, traditional. I think they're made out of just wood, then with a thatched roof. And the actual traditional name for them is a ketuvalum. And it appears that there's basic ones, but then there's all the way up to very luxurious ones. Um, so depending on how you like to travel, there is an option for everyone. So in terms of how I'm illustrating this one, I decided to keep it simple again and just try and use my black and gold. So I'm just using my fine liners to illustrate the boat and the river and then just the stems and kind of like to remind me where to put the gold for the leaves in the jungle and then just fill that whole background full of gold ink and pen and try and display some like palm tree leaves and stuff like that. So really just overcrowd that sidelines because I wanted to try and show that it's not just like a river that we're used to, it's something really amazing with these all these like arches of palm trees and jungle lushness coming over the top of your boat. I just think it's awesome. And while I'm taking my time drawing out every individual leaf on here, which did take a while, I'll just mention one quick other fact that I found and I really wanted to include in the setup, but I just couldn't think of a way to get it in there. And that is that the word shampoo comes from the Hindi word kampo, which means press or massage. And it's likely to be dated centuries ago when it originated in India, which was when there was a scalp massage using fragrant oils. The dried Indian gooseberry mixed with many other herbs was used to wash hair. And it's a recipe that is actually still used today in the country. Um, so there you go. Random fact, completely unrelated to our journey down the Kerala waters, but I just wanted to let you know. And now that the black and gold parts are all done of that illustration, I'm really happy with the amount of gold on there. I think it makes a definite impact and brings what could be quite boring to life, I think. Um, and then I just finish off the rest of the spread, adding in my titles of the days of the week and the dates and the little borders, and we're done. And that is how this page ended up looking. And now for this final page, which is week five, I decided because there's only two days in this final week of August that I would use the opportunity to do a nice full picture on one side of the book. Um, and so this one here, I have decided to focus on the very beautiful Himalayas. I mean, how could I ignore them through this whole setup? I've barely mentioned them, but I just needed to show them some love because this is definitely a mountain range that I am absolutely dying to see. I think it's, you know, it's like one of the most famous ranges there is on our on our world. And I just think it would be beautiful to see and then tie that in with all the beautiful nature and the animals that are around. I think it would be one ideal place to be trekking. And now someone who's never seen snow, as I've mentioned before on the channel, someone who's never trekked, um, I do think that I should start practicing. I think I need to start hitting some of the Australian hike trails because I think if I want to go and see the Himalayas one day, I'm going to need to build up some endurance so that I can get a little way up into these beautiful ranges. Um, so I'm using this opportunity to illustrate them using my watercolor. I have actually been wanting to do some relaxing watercolor landscapes for a long while. And I thought this was the perfect opportunity to work on one. Um, it was super, super easy to achieve. And, and I'm sure there's people out there right now saying, yeah, right, um, I don't think it's easy, but I promise you that I think anyone can create a landscape like this. I really feel this is where you should start. If you're starting to learn watercolor, try something like this, like a misty mountain scene. It's very rewarding and I feel that anyone can do it. I honestly believe that. If you do have trouble, I am creating this as a long tutorial 
tutorial, like a full length, almost real time tutorial for on my Patreon if anyone's interested. Uh, my patrons over there have expressed that they would like to learn more things about art from me. So I'm adding this one to the next video on that list, which is going up in a couple of weeks. But yeah, and on there, I will be showing exactly what I do. So if you're interested in learning how I created this from scratch, check out my Patreon channel and you can sign up for as little as $2 a month to get this tutorial and lots of others. But for now, you can see what I'm doing on the screen, just using one brush, water, and one to two colors of watercolor. It's mainly the blue and a touch of black. But yeah, so all the details will be in the other tutorial. And now I'm going to take a minute to talk about the Himalayan mountains themselves. So the word Himalaya is actually a Sanskrit name that means abode of the snow. So Hima was snow and Alaya was dwelling or receptacle. So where the snow dwells is the abode of the snow, hence Himalayas. So totally cool to know where these things come from. And the last little fact that I learnt about this guy and I probably learnt in school, but I have totally forgotten it, is that India was once actually attached to Australia. It was called the Indo-Australian plate and the plate about 70 million years ago actually broke off and it moved and collided with Asia and that's why it is now part of Asia but the Himalayas were created from that collision which just blows the mind. Um, our earth is an amazing place and I love hearing facts like that. Yeah so best time of the painting is always pulling up that tape at the end and sticking it straight into my journal on the right hand side and then I've just left the two squares for the Monday and Tuesday of that last week of August um, so lots of space to write in that week and I just finished it off with some blue highlights and that is how we finished up the final page for my August weeklies now if you're wondering why I haven't done the options for next month yet I am sorry I decided not to put them into this video because it felt a little crazy choosing for the month of September when we haven't actually entered August yet so I'll actually do that vote um, in next week's video so if you're not subscribed please subscribe to the channel so you can come back next week to vote for the September country so that will be in my draw with me video that goes up next week which will be an art piece inspired by a word that makes you think of India and I've had suggestions from my subscribers and I've now chosen one and it is going to be Namaste. So to see that art piece that I create next week do subscribe and click the notification bell so you can get told of when it goes up and yeah and then I will release those country options for the month of September. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.